Welcome to 2012 2, This Shit Again. So a little over a decade ago, Ed Warren and Catwoman were astronauts working on a satellite when a mysterious alien machine attacks their shuttle and kills their co-engineer. Ed becomes the fall guy, ruining his career, while Catwoman decides to keep working at NASA. Fast forward to 2022, and Samuel Tarly, a mega-structurist, discovers the moon has changed orbit. This information quickly gets picked up online, and mass panic ensues as the moon is in fact getting closer to the Earth, and global disasters begin to wipe out whole nations. So Ed, Catwoman, and Samwell are called forth to go to the moon to reset its orbit and face the nanotech monstrosity that nearly killed them a little over a decade ago. Roland Emmerich has such a spotty career. For some reason, he is fixated on disaster movies, which always turn out to be disasters themselves. On the other hand, he's been a solid director outside of them, with great movies like The Patriot or The Fun Adventure of Stargate. The shreds of who Emmerich used to be are still there, just not shining through the planet-sized piece of crap this film is. The focus jumps back and forth rapidly between the team on the moon and the survivors on Earth, making you feel like the puck in a game of air hockey. This jumping around also applies to the drama popping up like pimples on a teenager. Oh no, there are other people who are trying to survive who've broken down on the side of the road. Nah, just kidding, they were waiting there for someone else to come by so they could steal their Humvee for some reason despite already having a working vehicle. Or Ed's new wife wife's husband soon to be removed for some reason, needing to die because he and his daughter fell behind? How did they fall behind? And of course, nothing makes sense. Gravity selectively turns on and off like a kid playing with a light switch. Birds start falling out of the sky because there is no air, but the people on the ground are fine because they still have air. If the moon is above you and the air should have been pulled up, which means you probably should have ran out of air, not the birds. At one point, Ed's son is crushed under a tree that's almost five feet in diameter, but he's not dead, and when a gravity wave passes over them, tearing mature trees out of the ground by their roots, the two people with a combined weight less than Whoopi Goldberg are unaffected. Even the exposition dump generates more questions than it does answers. You're telling me this hyper-advanced ancestor of mankind didn't think to put a kill switch in their nanotech Alexas? How is the nanotech blob even flying through space? What is its propulsion? Also, is it just me, or did the ancestor's language look like it was plagiarized from Subnautica? I don't know what else to say, these disaster films are pretty much all the same. They make no logical sense, they're meant to be just big dumb fun, but even Independence Day and Armageddon had their uplifting or inspiring moments. Moonfall is just a physics engine set to RNG. It makes no sense, the writing is bad, the pacing is fast as fuck boy, and the world that was created here is stupid and boring. No, Moonfall isn't good. If you want to watch disaster films, go watch the previously mentioned or even smaller scale ones like Dante peak or twister. At least then things will make more sense. Now, thanks for watching. Please like, share, ring the bell for notifications, and if you want to watch more movie reviews, then subscribe and check out my review of the tedious Scream 5 at the link over there. And I'll see you in the next video.